I can remember when Ellie was at primary school and she frequently had headaches. Um, didn't seem to make any difference what subject she'd been taught, whether she'd had PE or whether she'd been having a maths lesson, she would come home and at some point in the day she'd had a headache. So we tried to work out <clears throat> whether there was something worrying her at school, whether that was causing her stress or upsetting her, but there didn't seem to be any pattern to it. And then we'd go a few days and she didn't have any, any headaches. And then something would happen and we'd have head headaches again. So after a few weeks we took her to the doctors and the doctor said that she would probably grow out of it. He couldn't see any reason why she should have headaches and just to give her a cowpaw. So we did that for a while. My memory is that it was fairly constant. We did initially start thinking whether or not it was linked into certain subjects. Um, things like PE, you know, she's had PE, is she worried about um, getting changed in front of the boys, doesn't want to do it or whatever. Um, or she's just lazy, doesn't like it. Um, you know, some kids that age just don't like exercise. Is it something like that? She's quite young, so she wasn't really able to describe what was going on. Was no, she? no. Nothing to compare it to or anything like that. No. I mean, later on it got to, you know, what sort of number is it, giving it a level. But at that time she had nothing to compare it to really. And, you know, got a headache. You just think, well, you know, it's like a six-year-old and I've got a tummy ache. Yeah, you know, be all right later on sort of thing. And they forget about it two minutes later. But. Uh, but then we started to think that perhaps it was because headaches ran in the family. Yeah, yeah. My mum, so Ellie's grandmother, um, suffered quite badly from migraine headaches, still does. Um, I used to when younger, don't so often now, but um, certainly both my brothers and, and sister are all similar sort of things. Um, having said that, you know, as far as Ellie was concerned, it was a case of well, she's got a headache, we, we did, we had the same when we were younger, we, we got over it, so, you know, is it something that, we should, you know, we should be making a fuss about? I had a really, really bad headache, constantly. Um, it felt like someone was crushing my brain, or like my head was going to explode half the time. It was like a constant thumping in my, in my head. I don't really remember Ellie being ill, or having any of the the symptoms of the head thing um, until possibly until I was sort of 13, 14. Um, I just remember coming home in the evenings from school and we will have had a meal and Ellie will just say I've got a headache and it was always a bit strange because it would um, the headaches would sort of subside when she lay down. So the GP arranged for us to see a specialist at the hospital and we went to see the, it was a nurse practitioner that saw Ellie in the hospital. She talked to Ellie all through the different symptoms that Ellie was suffering from, um, did all the tests for balance, all that sort of thing. Could see no reason for these headaches and she just discussed different sorts of pain relief that Ellie could have but said that the pain relief could cause things like depression, so it might not be worth having all of the, uh, the tablets. Um, and then Ellie said to her that the headache goes when she lies flat. So then she showed the nurse exactly how she lay down to get rid of the headache, and that struck a chord with the nurse. So the nurse went to find the doctor and said, you know, Ellie, Ellie's headaches go when she's lying completely flat. And the doctor said, well, perhaps we ought to send her for a scan then. And they arranged for her to go and have a scan. It's, it's little things like that. They don't really 
mean anything at the time but then when it started getting worse and becoming more frequent and almost constant and Ellie coming home from college as against you know, primary school or coming home from secondary school when she was at Henley and every night it would be I got a headache and most mornings even it would be I got a headache and that, that was something more than just you know the odd migraine or eye strain from watching too much TV or reading a book in poor light or something like that. College and work it was quite difficult for me to concentrate and when you've got to really put 100% into everything when you have this nagging at the back of your head constantly it's really really difficult to not think about it and to sort of just you know get on with anything when you've got that sort of thing going on in your head. I'd get really stressed at college um, which would you know I'd, I'd, so I'd get quite upset and I think people again got quite fed up with me at college thinking oh she's just you know she just doesn't want to do the work or something like that. Well I came up with this problem wasn't it? it was somebody who wasn't a specialist were they and they were going to pass it on to somebody who was a yes. specialist in this field because there was some sort of well, malformation of the skull. Um, my initial reaction was kind of relief, to be honest. I was glad that it had finally been diagnosed after 16 years of going to and from the doctors to finally have someone say, this is what's wrong with you. It's a massive relief to know that there is actually some something that's a problem and it's not just in your head. Trying to get your head around what was actually happening was that pressure was building up inside the skull for the cerebrospinal fluid and it wasn't able to flow down through the spine out of the way and such like and this is why when she'd been doing exercise or when she'd been stood up for a long time um, the skull and the brain the brain in particular pushed down inside the skull a little bit and what it was doing was it was blocking a bit at the top of the spine where the fluid is supposed to flow through and the, as the flow rate was reduced there so the pressure built up elsewhere um, and that's why when she lay down for a long time the pressure was released the brain I suppose slipped back into the skull a little bit and it allowed it to flow a little bit better so obviously, you know, we had to consider the operation. Um, but, I mean, that in itself wasn't an easy decision to make, was it, really? It wasn't our decision. No, it wasn't. Just, just finding out what it was all about <coughs> and talking it through with Ellie. Ultimately, if she had to make the decision, we, well, we really couldn't make it for her. So it was... It was kind of half and half, whether it was easy or not easy to make the decision. It only really hit home to me that I was having the operation the la my la on my last day of college, when I was on the train journey home. Um, I just broke down on the train because I thought to myself, this could be the last time that I ever see these people if something goes wrong in the operation. Could be the last time that I don't know, that I do anything. So in a sense, my last day of college, it felt like I was saying goodbye to a lot of people, which was really hard. Um, a lot of friends as well. It was just difficult. Yeah, we had to talk through possible outcomes of the operation. Can you remember the sort of things? That... Yeah, we were told there was a possibility of it causing epilepsy and the possibility of it causing a stroke. So it was just a, an awful lot to take on board and a lot to weigh up. Well, and the operation was removal of a bit of the bottom of the skull and a bit of the top of the first vertebrae. So the skull's open, the brain's visible, the... Um, spinal cord and all sorts of bits and pieces like that so apart from you know bits and pieces that just been mentioned there there was blood clots obviously and 
also the possibility of um, you know, spinal damage, wasn't there, as yeah. well. Um, I've actually asked Wayne a fair few questions. He was my personal tutor at the time. I asked him what his re initial reaction was. Um, and things like that to see how he thinks that people reacted. It's quite hard because you don't ever expect to be told anything like that. Someone's going to have um, got like a, no one needs like um, surgery and to be off for so long. So the reaction is quite hard. You always have to be supportive of the students. So that's always in the foremost of your mind. So um, hopefully I came across as supportive. But I mean, when you told me things started making sense. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I could then start explaining the way you're behaving and the way you were. But I mean, I wasn't going to I was shocked. I've, I've never experienced that before. It only really hit home to me when I had to say goodbye to Chris. He'd come home for the week, um, just because I think he wanted to be a bit closer to us all, um, rather than away at uni where he couldn't get news straight away. Um, he wanted to come and see me in the hospital as well. Um, it was really horrible having to say goodbye to him because, like I said, with my friends, I didn't know if I'd ever see him again. That's an operation itself. I just went to go to Coventry, didn't we? Specialist, you know, operation like that is just not done everywhere. So it was, it was three quarters of an hour drive over there or something like that. We had to get her over there and it was going to be an old age job, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously she was scared silly. We had to put a brave face on it for her, didn't we? Try. All right, we tried to, yeah. I think I managed until such time as she'd gone in. But, uh, no, she was very, very worried. And the, the pre-op, when they sort of sorted her out, went into the cubicles and got her all sort of prepped up. They were ever so good there. You know, trying to reassure her and everything like that, so she met the the anaesthetist. He was just chatting away to me like it was a normal day, um, making me feel comfortable and making me feel at ease, which was really nice. Um, and then I just got really, really upset when I had to say bye to Dad. Obviously, he'd been so strong. Um, it was just, it was horrible. Ellie, uh, Woody, can I, can I have a call? Um, and then Dad had to go, I had to lie down on one of the beds or whatever they call them and the anaesthetist just started talking to me like it was a normal day, he was like oh so what do you do when you're not lying in hospital beds and stuff like that so my last thought before I had this operation was of Doctor Who because <laughs> He was like, oh, so what do you do when you're not lying around in hospitals? And I said, oh, just sit at home and watch telly, really. So I was thinking, oh, I could be watching this episode right now. So it was, it was quite an odd day, really. It was the worst day of my life. Stressful for everybody involved with possibilities looking after her. We just, from a parent's point of view, just not being able to do anything. Could just give her a cuddle and that's it. But, you know, no magic potions, no. You know, healing it with a little bit of magic, like you did a little cut on her knee when she was younger. I was just feeling completely useless. Um, I remember coming round from it. First, 
my first thought was, oh my god, I'm really thirsty because I have all these tubes in and stuff like that. So I'm really thirsty and I really need the loo. Were <laughs> my first thoughts when I came round from this operation. But she came round from the operation well. <sighs> oh god. What was it she said? <sighs> first thing she said to me when she woke up, she was, I mean, she was on painkillers and whatever. It was at a morphine, wasn't it? Morphine drip. So she was a bit spaced out, but two things she said. She said, Dad, that was got be worth a puppy. And the other thing was, Mr. Dardis says, I have got a brain, so there, because he's seen it. Still haven't got a damn puppy, but you know. Um, which to me was brilliant because it meant that. Having gone through all of that, it meant, you know, we, we still had our Ellie with her sense of humour. Um, so, you know, just having come round like that, rather than her be sleepy, if she was able to joke like that, it meant, yeah, that's it. Things had gone a lot better than they could have done, let's put it like that. Yeah, that was a hell of a relief, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Went in to see Ellie after she'd had the surgery, which, which for me was the highlight of the whole experience because to see my my little sister dosed up to her eyeballs was uh, was wonderful. It really was. It's just sort of lying there, smiling every now and then, not actually looking at anyone. And you know, the stories as well. That that was quite fun. You know, oh Ellie threw up over this nurse and the nurse was quite impressed because Ellie was lying down and this vomit shot straight over her feet um, and hit the nurse and you know that's that's something I think to be applauded. It was long and quite frustrating the recovery process. Um, it took about three months all in all for me to get back to normal. Um, I had to spend eight days in hospital um, six of which I had to lie flat on my back, I couldn't get up, anything like that. I think mum and dad got quite frustrated with me as well because I'm quite a fidgety person, I don't like being still. Um, so they just sort of had a constant flow of DVDs and things like that for me whilst I was recovering. Yeah, I mean it was a pain trying to keep her laying flat and you know she wanted to move around and we did all sorts of things didn't we, trying keep her amused while she was laying flat um, and always you know changing her changing the dressing yeah mm. and then gradually the headache got easier didn't it yeah but the headaches I mean and then the headache stopped he's stopped I mean nowadays if she gets a headache it's a normal She's person's over the moon. headache. Normal person's headache, yeah. <laughs> over the moon. I've got a headache. It's a normal person's headache. Yeah. Uh, it was like your first day at school, coming back to college. It was like everyone was really happy to see me, which was lovely, and I couldn't be happier to see them. This it was sort of this is great, I'm back. Um and apparently Wayne was saying that I'm different now I came I was different when I came back after my operation. The only thing that I remember is you were cheekier, which was bizarre because um, obviously I knew, obviously knew you'd been operating there, so I didn't know whether you had all your hair shaved. Off. I had no idea because like, I'm not a doctor, but it was, it was there very good. It was, you could hardly tell, could you? But um, when you came back, um, you were cheekier. I think you had a new lease of energy and motivation. The last visit was... Um effectively just to um, pass her off as a clean bill of health sort of thing wasn't it and she just sort of said yeah, can I go on a roller coaster then and that was it yeah he says yeah you can do that if you want to you don't have to but you can <laughs>